for show. I will attempt to give, provide a very brief uh, historical uh, relationship as to where the this language called Pashto, the language of the Avrans, actually originated and where it came from and where it stands today. Based on historical records, the history of Pashto at the minimum goes back <coughs> excuse me, to 2,500 years ago, at a time when Alexander the Great was, ex was expanding his empires towards the east and the Persians were being um, driven out of their lands um, by the Greeks. At this time period, a nomadic tribe known to be of, of Iranian ancestry, not necessarily of Persian ancestry, but of Iranian ancestry. Here the word Iranian does not uh, relate to Iran, rather it defines a nation or group of uh, people. In the early in the early 300 BCs until the first century AD there was a mass migration of a group of people called the Sakas from what is called today Central Asia and Eastern Europe. The Sakas known by the Greeks as Scythians resided and migrated over the plains of Eurasia from Eastern Europe to Xinjiang province of China from the old Persian period to the middle Persian period when they were displaced or integrated with Turkic speakers during the Turkic migrations from their eastern uh, abode towards western um, Asia. Here is an example of the distribution map of the Sakas or the Scythians as they were known by the Greeks. As you can see in this um, map here, the homeland of the Scythians uh, or the Sakas is vast. It includes parts of Eastern Europe, uh, today's Central Asia, and uh, of course modern day Afghanistan and um, northwestern Pakistan, which is very similar both in culture and language to the people that lives in Afghanistan. So you may ask, who were the Sakas and how were they mentioned in history? Herodotus, known as the father of history, a Greek historian, uh, mentions the Sakas uh, as Xerxes' um, army contingent in 480 BC. And specifically, he mentions the Sakas of Amu Darya, known as Amurgians. Like their cousins, as it's been quoted, like their cousins, the Parthians further west, they were of Iranian stock, as mentioned before. They were speaking a language now held to be the ancestors of Pashto, or Pashto in the harsh or the more uh, eastern dialect of this language. The Sakas are a group of people, as mentioned before, who, after the defeat of the Greeks in those lands close or adjacent to them, um, migrated towards modern-day Afghanistan, while their close cousins, the Parthians, migrated west towards uh, northeastern uh, what is Iran today. Historians tell us it's about this time that Pashto or Pakhto, which appears to be a directly the descendant of the Saka language or a dialect of it, was introduced uh, into modern-day Afghanistan from the north. Where, where are the Sakas from? Where is their homeland? Their homeland is in Bactria, present-day northern Afghanistan, in Sodiyagia, or Sodiyagiana, depending on uh, pronunciation. Where is Sodiyagiana? Sodiyagiana is roughly the valley of Zarfshan, which waters Samarkand and Bukhara, both in present-day Uzbekistan. Herodotus' statement of the Sakas or Amurgians as contingents of Xerxes' army is borne out by the Achaemenian inscriptions of both Dariush and Xerxes, the leaders of the Persian uh, Empire. According to most historians who are acquainted with this language and the language of the uh, Indo-Aryans, Pashto or Pakhto, Paternage is the Avista with its so-called Zend commentaries. 
the Arista and the Zend are Zoroastrian scriptures of Prophet Zoroaster, who spread his teachings of of love and peace from Sagdiana, based on linguistic affinities and affiliations, Pashto is considered to be an Eastern Iranian language, and thus has a, has many similarities and interesting phonetic differences. For example, in many similar words between modern-day Persian and Pashto or Pashto, one sees a phonetic transformation, whereas a word is born out of transformation from either a D to an L. For example, in Persian, father is padar. That's the Persian, the Iranian accent for a father. Padar. In Pashto, it's pilar. As you can see clearly, the difference between the two words is in the D and the L, L transformation. Furthermore, in Farsi of Iran, to see is didan. In Pashto, is lidal. I have this daram, or in the Persian accent, it will be daram. In Pashto, it will be laram. Ten would be da in Farsi or Persian. It will be las in Pashto. Hand would be dast. Dast in Persian of Iran, dist in, per in Dari of Afghanistan, whereas it's las in Pashto of Afghanistan. Mad would be Dewane, as the Iranian would say Dewane, whereas the Afghan would say Dewana. As you can see, the Pashto word for it is, is Lewane, which is very similar to Dewana. The difference being not only in pronunciation, but in the transformation from the D to an L. So how does the above phonetic differences help with the understanding of the origins of Pashto? It is this signature mark of transformation of words from D to L that help to decipher the origins of the Pashto language. Not very many records of the time are available to us, but luckily we have coins that um, are found in the Gandahara region of of, of Afghanistan and partially in Pakistan. Um, in these coins we see the names of the Saka rulers and a number of titles and technical terms are to be found in the Khurushti inscriptions. These terms exemplify the DNL transformations. This is where the importance of the phonetic difference comes into play. The coins represent words that show the transformation between the D and L. The L transformation from the, the Persian D being a signature mark of the Pashto language. Examples of the phonetic differences in the, in the two languages can be found in these coins, and here are some examples. Spalagdama. Spalagdama. It's a Saka word, which means army leader. Spalagdama is similar to the Pashto El, where Spada being an army officer in Persian, and Dama being a leader. As you can see, the names of the leaders of this vast region, um, it, you can see the signature mark of the phonetic differences in the Pashto and the Persian. Another example would be Spala Hura. Again, Spala, Spala, similar to the Pashto L transformation or, phon or phonetic difference between it and Persian is revisited again. Spala, Spala Hura. In Persian, it's Spada, Ahura, which means army, spirit, or God. The word Ahura Mazda of the Zoroastrians is derived as an example from this relationship. Another word that's found in these coins is Chashtana. The word Chashtana in Pashto or Pashto means Chashtan or, or master or a husband. In conclusion, 
There's good evidence of affinity between the Saka dialect and the Pashto of Pashto, as far as we know. Of course, the origins of Pashto is likely to extend earlier periods, given the existence of deeply embedded Indo-Aryan Iranian element in the Pashto language. At the least, we can begin to think of Pashtuns, Pashtuns, talking a language from which present-day Pashtun language has originated.